Good evening. This is that one guy broadcasting from Snowy Holland. Uh, I've had a comment on my last video. Um, I'm not sure what the tone of it was, but it uh, didn't sound very friendly. I'd just like to remind more experienced players that this is intended to walk uh, new players through the very beginnings of their space journey. So, if you're here, you've probably watched the first episode, so let's go ahead and go to the Vehicle Assembly Building. Today we're going to be making a manned craft, and it's going to be a simple rocket pod manned craft. Now, in my last episode, I noticed that the Bandicam logo actually <laughs> obscured my name, uh, my the place where you enter the name. So, what we're going to do is we're going to name this the Helios 1, but you can't tell that, and I'm very sorry about that. So the pod you're going to want for this is the easiest thing to put into space that's manned, is the Mark 1 command pod, or the command pod Mark 1. Now there's a few things that you're going to want. Now the first thing is definitely a parachute of some sort. I highly recommend the Mark 16, however, you can radially mount some Mark 2 R radial mount parachutes on there. The next thing you're going to need is because this is the part that you want to re-enter the atmosphere, and just this. You're going to want one of these decouplers, the TR-18A stack decoupler. You can remember that because it's the same size as this. Now, as you see over here, this will decouple, and then when you hit space again, it will deploy your parachutes. The next couple of things you're going to need is you're going to need an advanced uh, SAS module, or an ASAS. You're going to need an RCS uh, fuel tank, one of these, not these. These are way too big, as you see. And let's see, some rocket fuel. We'll do that, and then an engine for when we're in space. You can combine these in pretty much any way you want, but your first orbiter should look something like this. Now, this is a suborbital flight episode because I want to get uh, you familiar with the flight controls. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the symmetry to 4 and put two sets of thruster blocks on here. Now, the reason for this is it makes maneuvering in space a lot easier, even if we're not on an orbital trajectory. But beyond that, you're going to basically rebuild under here, like the American Space Program did with the Mercury capsule. Uh, they went from Mercury Redstone to, I believe, Mercury... <sighs> Mercury Atlas, I want to say. It's either Mercury Titan or Mercury Atlas. So now what we're going to do is we're going to left-click the command pod and scroll wheel up so that we have some room to work. Next, we're going to go back here, because this is the part that's going to be maneuvering around in space. This is our space vehicle. We're going to get another stack decoupler, and as you see, a shroud pops up, but more importantly, it's separated into another stage right here, and we really don't need that. You can actually make your life a lot easier by dragging this up to here. That means when you hit space, it will not only decouple this, it will start this engine, so that you don't have to hit space twice. It's just something that makes your space flight a little easier. Next, we're going to add the part that's going to get it up into space, hopefully, uh, and add an engine there. We're going to add the more powerful non-vectoring engine because I figured out what I did wrong last time. I don't ordinarily use the winglets because, well, it's been a long time since I've built rockets this small. So what we're going to do is we're going to put four winglets on the bottom here, and there's our rocket. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a T-18A launch stabilizer on there, and then we're going to click on the rocket and bring it down just a little bit so that we're not so high up off the ground. Now the other thing you'll notice is these are disconnecting before this engine lights. That's not good. We want to bring the engine down so that when we hit space, it'll not only disconnect these, but light the engine. All right, that looks good. Let's hit save and head out to the launch pad. Well, there we are. Right here we have Jebediah Kerman. There's some buttons over him, but we're not going to worry about those. Not yet, anyways. And as you remember from last episode, I introduced T, which will turn on SAS, and Shift, which is the throttle up. We're going to throttle up to about 80%. Now the things that we're going to do as well is, I'm going to introduce you to F, which, as long as you're holding it, it toggles the status of your SAS, so if your SAS is toggled on with T, holding F will turn it off, 
If it's off, holding F will turn it on. Let's see, another control system is R. If you hit R, it turns on your RCS, and as you see, the nitrogen bursts there are trying to stabilize the rocket. Let's not waste too much of that. Caps lock. That will turn these over here blue. Now, what that does is it turns on precision controls, which means when you use WASD, it will not completely uh, make your rocket flip out. These are finer controls. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch when we get to about 5,000 meters, if we get that high. We're going to do a maneuver called a gravity roll, and I'm going to walk you through it when we get there. All right, launching Jebediah, hopefully into space, in 3, 2, 1. There we are. That rocket is straight as an arrow so far. And as you see, we are a little bit over a G of force, and he is smiling. That's good. We should definitely capitalize on that. Let's pin our resources panel up by left-clicking on it. We're not going through fuel too terribly fast, but we are going through some fuel. So, we're coming up on 1,500 meters. Here's what we're going to do with the gravity roll when we hit 5,000 meters. We're going to hold down F, and then we're going to depress the D key until our indicator, our artificial horizon right here, is resting at the 60 degree above the horizon marker at heading 090. That's due east. East is generally how you're going to want to uh, start your orbit as you can capitalize on the rotation of the planet. So here we go in 3, 2, 1, F, then I hold D, and we are pitching over, but not as much as I would have hoped. Oh, there we go. Yep, we're pitching over. Now, this gravity roll is taking a long time, and I designed this rocket with this in mind. We're going to try to get... Oh, there we go. Now, you don't need to be so precise here, but generally you want this readout to read 090, and you want it to be roughly at the 60 degree marker. Now, if we hit M, we can actually see what that's doing to our trajectory. Instead of going straight up like before, we're actually pushing out to the east a little bit. This is something that people do to get into orbit. It's called a gravity turn. Now, if we come back to here, our ship is slowly, as we punch up through the atmosphere, starting to tilt over just a little bit too much, but that's okay because we're almost out of fuel. All right. We're going to go ahead and decrease our throttle. We're going to hit X, and then we're going to hit Space to stage step. Now, don't be concerned if that does that. We're going to bring it back to 60, and you're going to hold F when you're maneuvering, and let go of F when you're not. We're going to throttle up to 50%, and continue our climb. We're going to click on this little arrow down here in order to bring up the nav ball in the map view. When this reads 55 kilometers, we're going to hit X, as we do not want to break the atmosphere. Well... Maybe we do. We'll see. This is uh, a standard flight for KSP. You're going to be making this sort of maneuver quite a bit. This is a very basic maneuver that's used for getting into orbit. Alright, let's see. We're going to stop at 75 kilometers by hitting X. There we go. We're going to hit M to come back to this ship. As you see, we see stars. And <clears throat> we are almost out of the atmosphere. Now, if you hit R right now, you can let go of F, and you can watch how much more effectively the RCS will move you around. Now, if I turn off the RCS by hitting R again, that's this green indicator light right here, you can see, by using gyroscopes, we can still move around. The gyroscopes are internal to the craft, and that's how spacecraft redirect their flight. I would hazard a guess to say that this could probably, this setup right here, could probably get into orbit. So if you copied the design completely, we could potentially use it to get into orbit. Now, 
we're approaching what's called our apoapsis, which is this point right here. It's the highest point in your orbit. There's another one called the periapsis, which is the lowest point in your orbit. But because we're not actually in orbit, it doesn't matter. This is just the highest point in our flight. So what we're going to do is this little guy right here, this circle, is called the prograde marker. If you point it, if you point it, I shouldn't say it, if you point your artificial horizon dot at this marker, the center of it, you will continue going the direction you are already going. And what we want is something called the retrograde marker, which is back here. It's the exact opposite side of the prograde marker. It has a little X through it. This will uh, face your engine away from the direction, or I'm sorry, this will face your engine toward the direction that you are heading. Now, before we hit the atmosphere, we need to hit space in order to uh, jettison the space flight, I guess, the part in space that we were hoping to get, the space pod. Now, we want to keep the bottom of the craft. Q and E will cause it to roll, as I am doing right now. We are going to try and keep the bottom of the craft pointed at the retro or pointed at the prograde. So we want the nose of the craft to be pointed at the retrograde. So this artificial horizon marker should be pointed at the retrograde. Now we're coming down out of orbit. Well, I shouldn't say out of orbit. We're coming down back into the atmosphere. Because all we did was just touch space and came back down. As you see, still roughly zero gravity. And let's see, what else is noteworthy? We're still picking up speed. This is because the uh, atmospheric pressure has not reached a point at which it will slow us down yet. However, we're going to slowly stop picking up speed and start losing speed. That's when we're going to experience what's called a G buildup. Now, I try to shoot for less than 5 Gs. Because once you start getting up into here, that starts getting dangerous for your crew if you are into role-playing. Now, as you see, the G-meter is climbing. But I do not think it will get above 5, hopefully. Hmm. Well, there's 5. Good. And it should come back down as we hit terminal velocity. Now, when we hit 200 meters per second and 5,000 meters above the surface of the planet, we should deploy our parachute. So, here we go, deploying parachute. As you see, that increased our G's just a tiny bit, but that is because we're causing more drag now. And Jebediah Kerman is coming down. He was this... I guess save files, first Kerbal into space. He did not do an orbital flight, but he did go into space. He saw the blackness of space, and now he's coming back down. So now that the parachute is deployed, we can hit T to turn off the ASAS, or I guess the SAS system overall. And there we go. The parachute has deployed. We are coming down for a nice landing out in the middle of nowhere. I actually don't see any land anywhere. So this has been that one guy. Thanks for watching. I hope that I can post a video on how to get into orbit very shortly.